we're going to be doing now is comparing the sound fields of the two systems over a reflective ground plane. And what I'm going to do first is to start with the three-way system, which represents a, a reference system that could be found in any typical living room. A, in this specific instance, it's a three-way system composed of a scan, ski, scan speak one-inch diameter tweeter soft dome crossed over to a six-inch Parts Express mid-range driver and then a 10-inch scan, scan speak woofer, hard to say. And the crossover points on this system are approximately 1,500 hertz between the tweeter and the mid-range and approximately, I'm sorry, 1,500 hertz between the tweeter and the mid-range and 150 hertz between the mid-range and the woofer. And the, the height of these drivers are set to typical systems as you might find in your home. Now this system uh, utilizes, utilizes a Linkwitz Riley acoustic 24 dB per octave crossover between the mid-range and the tweeter. I am holding a microphone for the real-time analyzer now. And if you hold this up here roughly on axis, halfway between the mid-range and the tweeter, which is about this location, that's where the designed axis of this system would be. Now what I'm going to be doing is comparing different frequency responses with the mic held in different locations, up and down, near and far, at different heights, to illustrate the sound feel of this typical three-way system over the reflective ground plane or a, you know, the floor without a carpet on it. We have a real-time analyzer display on running on the computer. It's covering 20 to 20 kilohertz with a scale that roughly minus 25 to plus 15 with zero at this point. And we have this set for the correct aspect ratio of about 25 dB per decade. That's a, that's a decade, 100 to 1K, 25 dB per over here. So it's not compressed. It's an average aspect ratio that you might see. Uh, one additional comment having to do with what you see on the screen of the real-time display. This is in relative numbers. This is not sound pressure. It's uncalibrated. It just so happens that 0 dB is here for no good reason. Actually, when we're setting up the system to, with this two-way, uh, this kind of represents the curve. And of course, when I'm fairly close to it, it's up near the top. But what this is illustrating is relative changes in the frequency response. If you had a perfect speaker, that had a perfect frequency response, you may get level changes near and far and side to side, but it would stay essentially perfectly flat. But many systems, particularly when you use them over the ground plane, are not flat. As you listen to them in different locations, the relative frequency response changes, i.e. it doesn't stay the same with different positions. This represents a rather good curve when it's up close, but if you check it out somewhere else like we're going to be doing, it changes dramatically. So again, this is not calibrated. This is not 90 dB SPL. This is just relative levels. And uh, when I turn the noise on, it is loud, it's significantly loud in here to where other people can't hear me talk to them. It's quite loud. It's fairly, I'm using a uh, uh, close mic, close mouth headset microphone. Okay, I don't but in any case, it, it rejects the sound of the noise and allows you to hear me speak over the noise. I neglected to say that it's 5 dB per major division going across here. So if you look at the frequency response that's currently up on the screen, it approximately has it fits a 5 dB envelope. Or if you want to call the frequency response, it's 0 dB plus or minus 0 plus or minus 2.5 dB, which isn't bad. And this, you know, that would... There'd be a lot of manufacturers that would find that quite acceptable. So again, it's 5 dB here. It goes from 20 to 20 kilohertz, 20, 200, 2K, and 20 kilohertz. And then, of course, 1K is roughly in the center of the screen. That just gives you a little bit of reference on 
when you're looking at this because you can't see those numbers when you know we're backed away far enough. And so when I turn this on, you're going to see the on-axis response of this speaker, and it's going to be up near the height, up, up near the top, because I'm trying to get enough dynamic range in there when I take the microphone and go from near to far to get it on the screen. Now I'm going to turn this on. You'll see the on -axis. Now, one thing to note, we're using not true random noise, but pseudo-random noise. And the analyzer is synchronized to the true random noise so that if I, if I stop, stop talking and hold the microphone absolutely still, the curve will not change any. There's no variation like you would get with true random noise. And again, I'll... I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a, a simple walk-away test on axis, on axis of this system with the microphone held at the proper height going from near to far. As I get farther and farther away, you get interference from the ground reflection, interfering with the direct sound, and that causes peaks and dips in the frequency response. Okay, and as I may have pointed out before, it gets quite loud when you're standing directly in front of it, like where I'm standing now, and it, the sound pressure level drops off quite dramatically as you go back here, and you saw that on the screen of the real-time analyzer. And then in addition, when you're walking near and far from the system, you hear a, a distinct tonality change as you get farther, near and farther away. Now, what I'm going to do now is explore different response curves moving the microphone up and down. And I'm going to turn the noise on again. First thing I'm going to do is try it with the microphone, oh, maybe six foot, one foot, six inches, or one foot in front of the system. And I'll, I'll move it from potentially on axis and then go up and go down. And of course, as you would expect, as you get near the individual transducers here, either the mid-range, the tweeter, or the woofer, it's going to, that, the, the output from those drivers is going to dominate. So you, you typically do not listen to this in the near field. I mean, you don't sit real close. You might pull it off just listening right on this axis if you're very close, but it's not very smooth. But what's significant here is the response curves changes quite, quite dramatically as you raise and lower the mic. Now I'm going to move back uh, approximately maybe two meters maybe, and we're going to do the same thing.
you can see a floor bounce dip in the response at about 150 hertz. Now I'm going to go back a little farther away, maybe more at a typical 10 foot or 3 meter listening distance. Turn it on. And Actually, this roughly at this height, CD would be the sweet spot on this system. Let me emphasize, this is a, a very well-designed three-way system with 24 dB per octave Linkwitz-Riley crossovers. In this case, it happens to be 1,500 hertz. And in the anechoic chamber along the, between the, the mid-tweet axis, it looks extremely flat. But of course, when you have the complication of putting the system on the floor and in this particular instance, it's a perfectly reflective floor. It, everything changes because you have a, a floor reflection. Now, typically, you probably would not listen to it like this in the house. You probably would have a carpet. But this does emphasize these certain frequencies. You always, even with a carpet, you're going to have potential problems having to do with the ground bounce off of the floor. Now, one other comment. When I was walking close and far, as an example, if I'm listening over the ground plane here, and I just simply walk up to it, the tonality changes significantly. It sounds like comb filtering. And it, it starts out, and in fact, I'll do it. Let me turn it on here. I'll walk and then kind of describe what I'm hearing. Now, in addition to the level being quite low, as I go near it, A to had a tonal change that started out high and went low as I walked up to it. In other words, the, what you hear is a strong function of distance. And again, this is a well-designed three-way system. Now, here's a test I'm going to do on the CBT arrays. I'm going to put the microphone on the floor and pull it back. You can see how the response changes on the floor. If I can get the mic cable pulled out here and turn it on. Now, that, what that illustrated was the fact that it, if you're measuring, measuring on the floor, the, res the response curve actually gets better and better as you get farther and farther away because there is no ground bounce. I, effectively, you have a mirror image of the, another system underneath the floor that's interfering with it, and you're kind of on axis of it. And the farther you get away from it, 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 it everything kind of coalesces and sounds better.